Sonic is um, Sonic's third triumphant leap in the 3D as a race game on the Sega Saturn. Yeah, safe to say Sonic R is not really the holy grail of gaming. It ain't even a good Sonic game. It's, it's an on-foot racer with Sonic and full bands. Now, to really enjoy Sonic R, you have to think of it as a kart racer with a jump button, not as Sonic Adventure with friends. To be honest, to be honest, this game already has some points. You know, you already get some bonus points for including for Poly Sonic. We really need more of that in our life. Let's start with, you know, our base roster. Sonic is fast, it's pretty good if you're a beginner with the game. Tails is slow and his flight isn't as powerful in Sonic 3 or Sonic 2. Actually, he doesn't have flight in Sonic 2. And Knuckles, he's probably the best character of your base roster. He glides, but he loses the ability to climb and he has roughly the same speed as Sonic. Like, I've had to say a little slower, but they're, they're practically at the same speed. And after that is our two two unique uh, characters, uh, Amy and Eggman. That makes them very special because they ride in cars, or Eggman in the Eggmobile. And I to say they're probably they're probably for being a game as I said earlier that it's a kart racer with a jump button. They kind of they kind of took a big old dookie on all that because. Amy and Eggman can't jump. They can float over water, but they they can't jump, bruh. That's that's something for being a game with levels designed if it wasn't any other collectathon platformer. Having characters who can't jump, it's the they're, they're almost impossible to be the main game with if you wanna unlock any characters because of how slow they are. Eggman has missiles, so I guess he's a little good. And Amy has a Friggin' speed boost, but you can't control it once you boost. It's not like a mushroom in Mario Kart. And probably, yeah, Eggman's got missiles, bro, but there's missiles thing. Yeah, but there's the missiles. They're as good as hitting you, but Sonic fan getting a girlfriend, man. Those things. They don't lock on like a red shell. They're just. Yeah. Swings. <laughs> and we, you also have a couple unlockable characters. You got. Metal Sonic, Tails Doll, Metal Knuckles, Egg Robo, and Super Sonic. So most of these characters are kind of just enhanced versions. Like, you know, Metal Sonic, Sonic, but better. Tail, Tails Doll and Tails, I, I think, I feel like Tails actually a little better than Tails Doll. I think he has better handling. And Knuckle, Metal Knuckles, but he's, he's like, the, he's honestly one of the best characters in this game. He's, he's got higher speed, he floats on water glides faster he's honestly one of the best characters in this game and we follow the best character with the worst character egg robo egg robo sucks freaking so hard bro he sucks it clean bro that's how hard he sucks egg robo he literally has legs but he cannot jump this is freaking retarded he's got two legs and a jetpack and he still can't jump eggman and amy makes sense because they're cars but this man's got legs. He can also shoot missiles, but he also doesn't float on water. And he's got a jetpack, and he doesn't float on water. I swear, but Egg Robo is the most annoying freaking tin can I've ever seen, bro. Pop his little bunch of garbage in him. Freaking garbage. Let's go after after our Tin Man. Our uh, last unlockable character is Super Sonic. He's actually kind of. If you were probably if you were a young kid when this game came out, you probably would have known you you even unlocked him. Because you got to go back to Sonic's portrait and you got to uh, mess around with the joystick on there. You gotta go if you scroll down on Sonic's portrait, you unlock you uh you can see you unlock him and you unlock him along with um a uh, stage which we'll talk about later. Yeah, but he's he's a freaking annoying little freaking rodent firecracker. He's He's like you may think he's the best character because he's supersonic. He can go fast, but like for a good character, it has to be fun to go against and fun to play as. He's fun to play as. He's a fucking horrendous to play against. He's I swear he just cheats half the time. Half. That's one thing I will have to say about the. I'll say about this AI later, but they. He, I swear he's not balanced at all. So after. 
characters probably to get down to our levels we got probably say probably start with the levels I think are the best it's probably radiant emerald she probably not even radiant emerald probably the only really good levels resort island resort island it's it's very it's very short it's it's like if you you know how to get around it you can get around this level really quickly if you know shortcuts and stuff like that but it's honestly kind of kind of easy <laughs> not gonna lie there's lots of boosters the one thing that holds this entire game down well i'll bring that up after we cover all the tracks but next is a uh, reactive factory or that stupid sand level that i hate so much i can't remember the name of but oh, freaking reactive factory it's actually reactive factory isn't half bad it's just a little long for us for a racing game level i know you get to compensate for that because that's kind of one of Resort Island's downfalls, is that it's too short with Sonic characters. But I think uh, Reactor Factory's a little long with Sonic characters. They try a little bit too much with it. And Stupid Dumb Sand Level, which name I don't want to remember, it's... it's... it's terrible. It's... it's the... here's just paths everywhere, collectibles everywhere, you just gotta go anywhere, path, it's confusing. It's fucking it's horrendous. It's honestly one of the worst levels I have ever. No, it's the worst racing game level I have ever seen. It's just, it makes me want to freaking drown my head in sand by looking at this. Freaking chop down in sand like a cat in a litter box. God. All right. So after that, we get our first three levels. And hold on, I'm actually I might actually be kind of brain farting on a. On a Sonic R levels because I I just recorded footage for this like a couple of day. Uh, I think yeah, because I think it's four levels. Yeah, and after that is Radiant Emerald. And Radiant Emerald, it's like a it's like a straight narrow path. I'm also about the stupid volcano level that I also don't remember the name of because I think I only played it once or twice. It is it is not very good. I thought, actually no, there's no volcano level. Sorry. <laughs> The water level, the water level, water level's okay, man, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's fine. And then Radiant Emerald is probably the most normal looking Rainbow Road knockoff I've ever seen. It's probably more seizure inducing than a level like Rainbow Road, because you friggin, it flashes constantly, but it's more of a straight path than you think, because I don't, I don't think it, it doesn't have very many collectibles on there. So, it's kind of something, but the stages are probably the biggest downfall of this game, not, not the characters. Because these stages, they're they're made. If you were to play anything like Mario, they they're trying to do a Mario 64 rather than Mario Kart 64. Because they're they're all over the place. You got different emblems, and rings, and stuff everywhere. The rings are usually well placed. There's a lot of them. But stuff like collecting uh, tokens and stuff that you have to go out of your way to obnoxious parts of the map, and you have to get first place to even have a chance of going up against the character you want to unlock. That is polarizing. That's horrendous. That's absolutely... That is something I absolutely... That's, that is why I probably would not be returning to this game. But... <sighs> these are, like these little offshoots on the side of it are so annoying and stupid. You have to get the tokens to unlock the other characters with first place. Worst thing is that these tokens are sometimes put behind some of the other collectibles. I put behind ring gates that are usually like 20 to 50 rings you need to have. These things have scarred me so much for life. I'm gonna be growing to my therapist. I'm gonna be crying. I'm gonna tell them. Sonic R maybe question the economy. And honestly, it's... These gates are so stupid. It's a dumb idea because you already spent your time going off the track. That by the time you get to one of these gates with enough rings, you're always gonna be in fifth place. And by, and by the time you get that token, it's all gonna be worthless. It's, it's a stupid idea. If you really wanted to fix Sonic R, you probably just should add the, um. Probably should make it more linear if you wanna make Sonic R really better. And don't lock stuff behind Clutch, but just lock it behind first place. It ain't that hard. Yeah. Yeah, it's something. Something else about this game I don't really like is that sometimes it, it'll pit you up against. So each, so let's say I'm playing as Sonic, I would go against base roster characters: Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy, Eggman. I'd go against them. 
But if you only have like one character unlocked for the new roster, like um, if you only have a character like Metal Sonic unlocked, there's probably a high chance you're gonna go against Super Sonic, or characters much better than you that you don't have unlocked yet, like Metal, Metal Knuckles, Tail Saw is only better, or Egg Robo. You probably you have a high chance of going up against them and not the other characters you have. That's something I think that really kind of brings this game down is it's not very player friendly if you just going into this game and you just unlock Metal Sonic, you're all happy. I, I want to play Metal Sonic. And when you get hit with this, and it's like a big, big donkey crap in your face. It's not, it's not very nice. It's not good. And it's, it's probably just, it's probably just really, really painful. Not gonna lie. And there's a couple extra modes in this game. There's um, there's tag, which is easy it says just tag all the players on your map. And then with that with that character, there's collect the balloons. That one sucks. I hate it. You have to freaking you have to just pick all the balloons out and head, head in like little random corners of the stage. And then you got your time attacks and versus mode, and that's kind of it. It's not not much replayability. It's little amount of stages, little amount of characters. It's I like I think I'm pretty sure Mario Kart on the SNES I think had. Like has it has eight characters. This game has like eleven, so it's not they are not they are not that different. And most characters are just clones, so you really only you only get to play as like five, roughly yeah, only like five original characters in this game, because half of them are just clones of each other. And that's that's something that like this game did not it did not do well. It probably wouldn't even done well if it was on a good console. Like a play, like the PlayStation or Nintendo 64, because it it it's it's such a it's a game that is trying to fill a hole that nobody asked for. Nobody wanted no people wanted what the Sonic Jam Sonic World was. People wanted a Sonic game to rival Crash Bandicoot and Mario 64. Nobody wanted an on foot Sonic racer. Horrendous. It makes you so. Freaking angry, bro. You could have, like, Sonic Jam, Sonic, Sonic Jam, Sonic World proved. Look at this, good proof of concept. And then Sonic R with its tank controls. It ain't, it ain't, well, it ain't what Sega needed at the time. It's not what Sonic needed. It's not what Sega needed. It's not what the Saturn needed. So, uh, yeah, I guess this kind of concludes it. Uh, I would, I would kind of recommend. I would recommend this game. Depending on what mindset you're going into it, just don't. If you ever want to try out this game, don't go into this game thinking it'll be something like Sonic Adventure. Go into this game thinking it will be something like a Mario Kart game, just bad with terrible turning. All right, uh, the. Uh